This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. Welcome back, everybody. Hour two, ready to rock and roll here on this Tuesday morning. Trey Lamb, head coach of East Tennessee State, will join us in about a half hour. Give us a look at the Buccaneers to get ready to host North Dakota State. Each and every Tuesday, we are joined by the head football coach at Minnesota State University, Moret Steve Lockway, joins us. The Dragons lost their home opener on Thursday night to Wayne State, and no rest for the weary as they're right back at it this coming uh, Saturday with a matchup with League Powerhouse uh, in Duluth. I know you are beyond frustrated with how the game played out. Um, we were just visiting off air of, of watching the tape back. Did it did it look as bad as you thought, I guess is the way I'll phrase it. No, I'd say, you know what, and, and I a lot of times I'll tell our team after scrimmages, after games, a lot of times, and I think it's true in life. It's never as good as you think, never as bad as you think. And I think, you know, walking off the field, it didn't it didn't feel very good. You didn't think it was very good. You go back and look at the tape, and we played a lot of really good football. We we had some down spots where we didn't play great football, and we gave up big plays. And I think if, you, if you're trying to sum it up, they made some big plays. We did not make, make very many big plays, but we had a high level of – of execution in a lot of areas. We had a lot of young, young guys step up and I think play really good football. Um, we didn't capitalize early offensively. We got three, three and outs to start defensively. We had short fields and, and I would say the offense just never kind of found a rhythm as the whole night went, but we were, we were a couple plays away. Yeah. If we score early and go up, things change. And that's, that's kind of how every game works. But the fact of the matter is we didn't get it done when we needed to. And took too long getting into the flow, you know, of the season. And, you know, those first game jitters, we got to we got to get those out and, and, and be better with that. Steve, when you have a pick six and a kick return against you, I don't know the stats, but I have to imagine it, the percentages are almost what 99%. You're probably not going to win the football game, right? Yeah, definitely not in our favor. And I felt like, you know, the game was running away from us. But the good news was we were we were keeping up with it, yeah. to be honest. Uh, even though it was we're not playing well, it's running away. We'd given up those things and and we found ourselves, you know, only down 10 and, and honestly had a shot at a stop, you know, to get the ball back. And, you know, it went off our defenders hands and right into their hands to catch and get the first down. And you're like, Oh, it's kind of one of those nights, but we were, you know, close is close, but close at the end of the day, yeah. doesn't cut it. And so, um, you know, we got to get ourselves back up off the mat and be ready to roll. How long do you let this linger with the guys? I mean, it, it, when you're back at practice Saturday, Sunday, like when did you say, okay, we, we got to let this go to get ready for the next game. We try to let it go the next day, Friday, yeah. we came in at our meetings and watched the film and said, Hey, let's learn from it. Let's, let's call it what it is. Here's the things that we didn't do very well. Here's the things we got to do better. Here's the bright spots that you know what we can really build on and, and be able to do those things. And so I think by the time we came back Saturday and kind of started the preliminary install for Duluth and walkthroughs, I think guys were in a, a pretty good headspace. And then we started kind of the uh, first normal week kind of here Monday, yesterday. And I think we had a really solid practice and things were good. And so uh, we just need to keep doing that throughout the week and go into a tough environment and try and find a way to win a football game. This is where you rely on your seniors, your upperclassmen to say, all right, this is, it's over. Yeah. We're, we're on to what we've got to focus on with Duluth now. Yeah. Strong leadership group definitely has to set the tone. And I think they definitely were of the, the sense of the sky's not falling. Certainly did not go how we wanted, how we expected, how we had envisioned, but that's life. And I think that's what I told them after you know, the in the team meeting on Friday, I said, hey, it didn't go as scripted. It's not going to go exactly how everyone wanted. But you know what? Who Who's had it go for them how they want it in life right. at all, right? We're all we're all here because we've we've had to overcome some obstacles. We've had to find a way to get ourselves to be a college football player, to make it in the classroom, to whatever. None of us bo- born with a silver spoon. And so this is our story. Let's just – that's going to be the story this season. So let's be gritty and, and let's – Figure it out. You know Duluth as well as anybody. Is this the same old, same old? What do they bring to the table? It's going to be a challenge on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, they are. They are so great on defense. Just they're they're aggressive. They get after. They press the pocket. You know, they make your quarterback uncomfortable. They're all over you, defending like the the receivers and the routes, and they stop the run. So defensively, they're as good as they've always been. Offensively, I think they're in one of their better phases. Mm. But they've been their quarterback is dynamic. Um, you know, he's like 245 pound bowling ball that can can run. It's like another running back back there trying to <laughs> trying to tackle. And so and he throws the ball well too. But when you look at it, it's kind of the throwback type offenses. You know, it's not a split back veer type offense, but it's the same mentality of we're playing with all eleven guys. The quarterback is not just there to hand it to somebody else. He's there to run. And so 
you've got to make sure you you have an extra guy that you have to defend in the run game. And as soon as you start doing that, then they hit you with the pass game. And this is one of the most explosive offenses yards per play last year. And then in this first game too. So we, we got our hands full. It definitely. was odd. You guys didn't play them last year. Does it feel like you haven't seen them in, in a few years? Seems like a long time. It was two years ago. <laughs> yeah. You watched that film and, yeah, I think it was like Jack Strands, maybe his first or second start. You see Brady Perriman out there that done as a true freshman, like he hadn't been in the weight room. It didn't look like ever. <laughs> you see, uh, you know, Brooks O'Brien starting that offensive tackle who was a true freshman that year. And so uh, just seeing that, our, I think our guys have, you know, obviously they're in a lot better spot than where they were, uh, you know, at that point in their careers. So I think that's solid. Now, you know, we got down 22 nothing and battled ourselves back into an eight-point game at one point somewhere in the second half. And so, you know, we can scrap, we can claw. You know, I think we're a better team than we were two years ago, but, you know, they're probably a better football team than they were too. So it's going to be a – hopefully it's going to be a good game. For your for your guys that have been around a bit, mentality-wise, they know about Duluth. They know the struggles that you guys have had with Duluth. How much do you fight that or do you embrace it saying, all right, eventually we're going to break through against them? How do you address that? Well, you're right on in the message. That's kind of the message of, you know what, that's, they are what they are. They've been really good. Let's respect that, but let's not let that be this uh, kind of mystique that, that gets them extra points or an extra advantage. Like let's, let's acknowledge it. It is what it is, but that's been in the past. This is now it's time for us to be able to make our own step in, in kind of whether you want to call those uh, fears about who they are, whatever. Hey, it's time yeah. to face the fear and, and go in there and, and get it taken care of. And so, um, if you're going to go into the lion's den, you can't just kind of tiptoe in. You better run in there with some aggression and figure out how to how to win the battle. Seeing from a, just watching a few scores from around the league, anything that, that caught your attention or interesting through the first couple weeks of the season? Well, it's, you know, you look and go, it's kind of a, two big wins from Sioux Falls, right? That um, yeah. you know, not a great season, but they win Saint, the St. Saint Thomas yep. game in St. Thomas, and who, you know, gives Northern Iowa a run kind of this last week and then they go to, to northern and win big and so i think that was interesting that the mankato bemidji comes down to the last second field goal where mankato wins that and you know mankato had won the week before on the road in northwest missouri so you know and and it was an overtime game for bemidji the week before that so they've um that was a couple of big battles i thought from that standpoint and so um you know minot gets four defensive touchdowns that yeah. makes you raise an eyebrow like wow I, that's <laughs> probably the only time that's going to happen in college football this year at all (laughs) levels. So pretty cool deal. And so, so it's a, it's kind of a wild league. Um, You know, you're just trying to play one week at a time. I saw the, the Sioux Falls result against uh, St. Ty and I immediately went to your schedule. Like you gotta, you're you're okay. You're, you miss them this year. (laughs) We do do not have Sioux Falls. We scrimmaged them this spring. And so, um, you know, that was good for, for both sides, I think to see something different and they definitely are hot out the gates and we'll see how that, plays out the rest of the way. You mentioned Brady Perriman. Give us the lowdown on him. I know you so such so talented receivers and so much is engaged. Tell me about him, his recruitment, and what kind of player he's developed into for you. Yeah, BP's really taken his game, I think, to a new level. And and I think that was maybe one of the things that was difficult for us on on Thursday. We've trying to get guys in the right position, um, you know, where he can play in the slot and he's definitely dynamic and he gives us some things and then there's some times you want to move him to the outside receiver spot because he can give you some, some advantages there. And without Carter Beer and caught, you know, um, with his injury out for the season that it kind of changed the rotation on us. And, and honestly, we're still trying to find our footing with what's the best way to put those pieces. And Brady allowed us to have a little bit of flexibility, being able to do that. But at the same time, it kind of pigeonholes, you get them stuck in one of the spots and you're trying to get them in, in some other places and put some other guys out of position. So he's a fabulous job. He's, he works hard. He, uh, he's humble. He, he makes sure that, you know what, he takes what's given to him and, and his number isn't always called gauge gets a lot of the attention, but Brady is just as big a part of that as anything. You mentioned the beer and injury, how deflating, how difficult is that to deal with for a guy that has such great athleticism way to catch the football? How tough is that going to be to overcome this year? Well, really tough just because we had obviously some uh, some continuity, some yeah. confidence, some rhythm in, in that piece. And and just personally, Carter was playing such great football last year. And then he got injured and missed, you know, about the last half of the season. So he really had to battle back through the spring. And then, you know, he gets through and he gets his leg back and we're going and he's got a pretty solid fall camp. And then he dives for a, 
for a catch in the end zone. And it looks kind of like a typical catch in a scrimmage and you know what yeah. landed wrong and whatever. And there you go. And mm. so um, it's just, he's been snake bit here the last uh, little bit. And so when he finally does get himself on the field, he's going to be a force to reckon with, but we're just going to have to wait for quite a while for is, that. Is, so hopefully he keeps going. Is, sorry about that. Is that a conversation you have? I know he used his red shirt to get a medical to, to keep another year. Or is that a conversation? Well, he can get had? a medical. Yeah. I think for him, it's, you know, that question It probably comes up maybe more at the end of next year after his senior year. Okay. What's my plan academically? Yeah. What's my life plan? Uh, you know, is it time to, to move on and get a job and, who knows, get married and yeah. move on with life? Or is it like, hey, I got another year in me or another semester and I can make this happen? And so uh, we'll see. I think that, that's a ways off for now. Appreciate the time as always. Safe travels and good luck on Saturday. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Hey, you bet. Steve Lockway, head coach of the MSUM Dragons, joining us each and every Tuesday. Dragons with 19th ranked Duluth coming up on Saturday. A big time challenge. MSUM has never beaten Duluth and he and I have had these. We've done this forever. Some of the scores have been as lopsided as you can think. Uh, we'll see how it uh, it manifests itself on Saturday. I will say, not all hope is lost here. Even if they were to lose Saturday, as you see their schedule, they have a non-conference game with McKendry. They're going to win that game. Augustan is where they're at. They have a chance here to maybe win three in a row before they play Mankato there October 12th. Mankato is going to be really the swing game of the season. If they can somehow, and they were so close to beating Mankato last year down there, that if they're able to get that, then you've got some other trajectory about your season. Um, regardless of whatever, happen, whatever happens, excuse me, of this game on uh, on Saturday in Duluth. So we'll see. Appreciate his time as always. We'll take a break. We'll come back and a few emails to catch up on. A few other topics I wanted to get into. His hot mic rolls on on a busy Tuesday morning. We're back after this.